Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to our community call. All right, let's get right to it. I think we have most of our uh, speakers already here. Nice. Nice. Good to see all the, uh, all the faces. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into it. So, uh, I see. Dean, are you around? I am around. Oh, so where, where are you these days? <laughs> I am back in Belmont. Back uh, in world back headquarters. In world headquarters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, it, it's been good following your uh, your your journey across the world recently. Uh, yeah, both have, a little jealous. Y- yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I now have uh, uh, um, a lot of sympathy for uh, the f- folks on Asian time zones uh, coordinating <laughs> with folks in 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 uh, U.S. time zones. In, in European time zones. So, oh man! <laughs> yeah, for the people who pull that off, kudos to you. <laughs> yeah. So, so you were you were I know you were at Hack Adam in Seoul, yes. Korea, and then yep. you were also at Biddle Asia right after that, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. got it. So, so like I, I, you know, I think just super quickly, like, were there any highlights or things that were interesting that came out of that event, or you know, uh, I'm sure there were, but yeah, I'd, I'd yeah, love yeah, some yeah, ideas. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, first off, so Erica Kang and 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 uh, Chango Unchained did an awesome job with the Hack Atom, um, and uh, and further, I think it was Eric was the primary driver on on Biddle Asia. Um, the Hack Atom had huge number of folks that were new to the space of crypto, new to the cosmos space, and so forth. And there were just you know like ninety project submissions that came together in that short period. Um, I was one of the judges, so it was a lot of fun seeing the broad range of of of, of uh, offerings. But it's well worth folks checking out the winners because there were some there were some you know pre- there was some pretty impressive stuff there. Um, you know, especially I mean, any of these things coming together in 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 a weekend is is impressive. But having you know over collateralized staking derivatives with you know or 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 an application that does multi-chain cross-chain nft transfers and trading and and stuff like that so we started to really see um cross-chain DeFi, um which which you know the ibc really has opened the doors for and the, and the interchain ecosystem is uh, it, it has really got some 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 significant lead in experience in being able to do that because it's so easy with IBC. So very excited to see a lot of uh, 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 examples of that flavor. Um, then Biddle Asia, it was a small conference, but it's really showing you know the 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 growing interest or not growing, but but how important. Um, that community is and and i was so glad to be there and start you know extending uh 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 agoric visibility out to there and talking to folks uh, in 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 that area so you know vitalik was talking about the merge and and ellie of starkware and Ilya of near and you know lots of people were there talking about where things are at um and it's just great to see the momentum even in this down market of of projects building stuff um Two big highlights for me uh, in, in, in Biddle Asia. One is, you know, I spent a bunch of time talking to um, Nick from MakerDAO about, you know, about IST, about how, um, uh, about how, you know, what we're building works and about, you know, and just digging into what things work for them, what were issues, what did they learn, what would they do differently, those kinds of things. And, you know, they, they too are in the mode of, of, um, this is a market institution that 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 needs to be solid and it's and and needs to be robust. It's not about value abstraction extraction. It's about making a a you know the, the grease for an economy. Really making making a layer that, that that makes it easier to have lots and lots of applications build. And so um, so it was it was just, you know great looking at stable token things from that perspective. Um, we were on the we were on a panel about stable tokens um, at that conference uh, run by Sam Kessler, and it was great. It was very well received. Um, we, you know, lots of people were excited about IST. Um, you know, and lots of discussion about uh, of, about how that would work. Um, the other thing, you know, last set of notes in in Korea. Um, so first off, it was great. The food was amazing. Um, <laughs> Chain Apsis through, you know, uh, did lots of uh, hosting and touring of us um, of, of the folks of Kepler Wallet. Josh Lee 
um, and 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 his folk um, uh, to you know everything from barbecue to karaoke, and so it was just it was just ex- <laughs> extremely welcoming, um, and just like Erica for the conferences did an amazing job at welcoming speakers and making sure that that you know we could get safely through immigration and 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 deal with you know how to get taxis and all these kinds of things that that are a strain when you're new or new to an area, um, but I spent a lot of time with. Uh, DSRV, they had a, they, they're, they're one of our validators. Um, they had a hacker house. And so I, you know, I, I uh, talked to a bunch of their team who were, who were, who were doing sort of an amazing spectrum of things um, and presented IST to, to their overall team. Um, went to Crescent um, or, or Bee Harvest. They, they have uh, one of the Cosmos AMMs where, you know, we talked about AMM design. We talked about how to do remote liquidations of IST over IBC. Um, and so that was, that, that was really good. And one of you, you, you asked about favorite things. One of my favorite moment, favorite, you know, small events, um, was that, uh, Young took a, a few of us to a jazz club in a, you know, small, you know, uh, uh, dingy jazz club in in the middle of, nice. of what felt like an abandoned market uh, because of course it was nighttime and the market was closed but it was just an adventure walking down this you know empty alley with you know echoing sounds and then suddenly you hear um, you know jazz trumpet playing in the distance and and follow the sound and get to this club so that was just that was just a, a very cool uh, uh, moment. Um, two more folks that, that, that I met there that were great. Um, so, uh, spent some time with Cosmo station. They run the extremely, you know, well-regarded mint scan. Um, and they're looking at integrating build into that. Um, and then nodes guru, um, was in town, not from Russia where they have moved out of, they moved to Bali. Um, but you know, they, so, so, so they were in town. Um, and got to meet up with them. Um, uh, one of them persuaded me to record a video for the Russian community, so that was awesome. Um, so, so, so it was just great meeting, you know, a bunch of folks that we've that 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 you know we rely on that have been supporting Agoric, that have been you know uh, uh, building things, and just get, finally getting to meet them in person in this new community. So that was a lot of fun. <clears throat> in Korea. <laughs> no, amazing, amazing. Thank you for that. That's a good recap. Yeah, I'm, I uh, I'm looking forward to. To this happening again next year? Did they are they doing it next year again? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah, it was right? extremely successful. Everyone was was very happy. You know, and again, it's that you know, like the Gateway Conference, like Cosmoverse. You know, sort of these small conferences with people that are building stuff. It's just a great uh, cross pollination of ideas and 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 you know, and just seeing everyone building lots of forward momentum, lots of lo- lots of um, uh, uh, growth. Oh. Uh, one more presentation that I did want to mention, um, uh, Jason Potts from RMIT, um, you know, who's, um, you know, uh, one of our leading economic advisors. He also presented at Biddle Asia that was very, you know, that was abstract, but really about how to think about crypto economies as different and significant, uh, significant move forward from a, you know, economic point of view in terms of what will be possible in the world. And it just is, you know, really sort of, eye-opening to 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 get his perspective on that and you know helps us think about you know what we're doing and why it's valuable and how you know change in ui will make a difference and 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 how we should think about economics differently in this new and digital world and so so i really enjoyed that and it's it's well worth getting that you know um uh mental reset after korea i went over to zcon so so it was not straight home it was from there to um, Zcon three in Vegas. Um, and there were a few people, uh, that went from Korea to Vegas. Uh, uh, that was a lot of fun, but I think the biggest thing, and you know, part of the reason we went to Zcon Zcash is, was our very first investor. Um, and, uh, and so bootstrap, uh, uh, foundation, which is, you know, Zcash turned into a, a, a nonprofit 501c3. So bootstrap foundation has, a lot of BLD tokens as are as the the first people who helped us out the gate and connected this up to you know uh, Polychain and Naval and you know and 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 you know got us on the road to to where we're at now and really believes in the large scale vision of 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 you know programmable money and the secure the security model that that lets us do the 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 Zoe smart contract framework and so I was presenting there and really it was overview to a lot of people in that community now that you know now that um 
they have tokens. They've got you know thing they you know they they to use and apply to governance and 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 apply to bridging from Zcash to Agoric. You know they're all very interested in in what does this mean? Um, how can uh, the programmable money and a you know the the the, the, the programming model that Agoric brings to the table be of value to them and how do we integrate it um, uh, and that sort of thing. One of my favorite things about Zcon is that community really is good at reminding you how it's not just about economics, it's not just about finance, it's about, you know, freedom and privacy. And, you know, part of the motivation of why we do this sort of thing is you know, what it, what it will enable in how humans cooperate uh, safely and, you know, and how important it is to lobby for and build software for and build communities for, um, you know, privacy and individual freedom. And that's, you know, it's, it's always nice to get that refresher motivation. So, so it was a really good visit. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Dean, for that, for that <laughs> globetrotting recap. <laughs> and I must apologize to everyone who I ignored while on the road there. You know, that time zone d difference uh, is challenging. We'll get better with that at that over time. But uh, now I'm, you know, back in home time zone and we'll we'll work at catching up with uh, everyone who I should have already followed up with. <laughs> so I, we should all DM you instantly is what you're saying. No, <laughs> no, no, that is definitely not what I'm saying. <laughs> should all DM all right. Santi and let him, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Dean. I, uh, I, I, I actually want to bring someone up on stage, uh, Jeet Rout, who, who hasn't uh, spoken at one of our communities calls yet he's he's our partner programs manager um and i think uh we, we should touch on the validator delegation program a bit since that's uh up and coming uh gee you i think you're able to speak now yep i am thanks Auntie. hey welcome uh hey everyone uh my name is Jeet. um i work on the partner programs team at agoric and one of the main programs i work on is actually the validator delegation program so at agoric we rely on all our validators to help operate the network um, and staking is a major part of that to secure consensus um, with both new blocks, uh, maintaining uptime and participating in governance. So the point of our um, delegation program is to ensure that um, we have high quality validators that can support uh, our secure and diverse decentralized network. Um, and so what we did in order to get this program going was send out a questionnaire to a variety of applicants um, and then we were checking up on both their operational capacity as well as their security standards. And uh, we also asked that, you know, they maintain a certain hardware requirements, um, maintaining uptime, uh, reasonable commission rate, uh, making sure they don't have too much of a voting power and are actively participating in governance proposals. So we've already done the first phase of delegation, which was um, 500,000 build. Uh, delegated to various validators, and we're actually happy to announce that we're going to be doing a phase two. Um, and the point of the phase two is to really make sure that uh, everyone is up to, to the latest security standards. So that'll be an additional 250,000 build. And we sent out questionnaires last week, and the deadline is actually tonight at midnight. So we ask everyone um, that's a validator who's participating in phase one to also submit the questionnaire for phase two. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me on um, Discord or on Twitter. So, uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Thanks so much, Santi. Cool. Okay. And, and where did you say people should go for to find that form? Um, it was sent out. To, it was emailed out to everyone that was already part of Phase One. Got it. Okay. 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 Yeah. And, and then, um, and for anyone who's potentially interested in becoming a validator in the future, just please keep an eye out um, on our Discord and in the announcements channel where we'll, uh, at some point in the future, be announcing what the future phases look like. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much, Jeet. Yeah, thanks. I, uh, I want to bring up uh, Roland, our product director, I think. Hey, Santi. Hey, how's it going, Roland? I'm doing great. Cool, cool. So uh, what are you going to cover for us today? I know there's a big world of product out there. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you know, one one thought here, you know, I, I typically go through engineering updates when we get on these calls, and you know, I think that sort of evolved from back in the day when the community calls were me with a slide deck and thirty minutes for engineering updates. Um, and I'm I'm realizing that sort of giving a list of what we're working on is probably less useful to, to our listeners. And I do I do want to remind everybody that we do build out in the open. This actually came up in a Discord conversation um, the other day. 
you know, if, if you're technically inclined at all and you want to hop into Git, GitHub and sort of get any details on any of the things we're building, all the issues are there. Um, we use we use a project management layer on top, so you may not see some of the sort of prioritization or, or labeling features, for example, that we have on there, but um, all the comments are there, all the, all the actual design and work is there. So I'll, I'll sort of start with that. Um, but then to give sort of more of like a narrative through line to what we're actually working on right now, rather than sort of a, a list of updates, um, we are really focused on getting an end-to-end -end for the inter-protocol. Uh, and, you know, I, I think the contracts have been either code complete or largely code complete for quite a while. Uh, but what's been missing from the UX side is uh, what we've been, you know, we've sort of variously called the on-chain wallet or the smart wallet experience. And, you know, for those of you that have been following our community calls for a while, you've probably heard about this before. Um, anyone that was part of the incentivized testnet or worked on our beta, um, you may remember the wallet experience being downloading, you know, getting Docker and running a Docker instance where you've got a process going that actually acts as your wallet. Um, and, you know, we've known forever that that's not a, a, a reasonable pathway to mainnet. And so the on-chain wallet is the UX for somebody coming to Agoric, you know, either for the first time or, you know, you know, multiple times uh, to be able to link their Kepler wallet or some other third party wallet to do all the signing, but to have a, a, an in browser wallet that manages some of the Agoric specific features. Um, and so, you know, this was sort of a gleam in a couple of our engineers eye like nine months ago. And, you know, this past, I, I think it was last week, actually, uh, we first saw a demo of it working with an AMM swap. And so really that, that was really exciting just to sort of see the, the full, full experience of that. And the, the work now really largely around, is largely around um, expanding that from, you know, what was a demo state to something production ready, and then also expanding it to our other applications and, and use cases within the AMM, for example. So right now it works for swap. We need it to work for all the functions. We need it to work for vaults. We need it to work for build boost um, and anything else we expect a user to do. So, Getting getting there really is our focus. That will drive a lot of our, our user testing and econ testing uh, that has been sort of, you know, waiting for, for some of this development to finish. Um, so with that said, and, you know, as I mentioned, you know, there is a bunch of other work happening at different layers of the stack. Um, you know, I, I think it really sort of gets to how do we get towards the mainnet one launch as quickly as possible. Um, and I do encourage people, you know, hop into GitHub and, and take a look if you're if you're inclined. Um, the one other piece I want to mention is I know there's sort of, uh, you know, we're all kind of looking forward to IBC being enabled on Agoric and uh, Jesse, who I think is speaking next, has a more detailed update on, on where we're at there. As, as many of you know, there's a bunch of precursors to making that happen. Um, so I'll let her speak to that. Uh, but obviously, that is a, a big piece of development work that's happening, too. And so I'll, I'll turn it back to you, Santi, uh, unless people yeah, have sure. No, no, that's great. Yeah, no, let, let's bring Jesse up. I, I think she, let uh... me throw in real quick. Welcome back, Roland. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yeah, I, I, was, I missed the last community call because uh, I was out on part two of my paternity leave. Um, and so now I'm back. All right. So last time around, um, I told you guys a bit about the work that we did to remediate a cumulative gas issue on mainnet. And that went swimmingly. We were able with the validators to uh, get the network back into a healthy state. Our next step from there um, in to answer the question of when IBC was another major network upgrade. And over the past week, our validator set has definitely been working hard on, on exercising the upgrade in a testnet environment before putting it into place on mainnet. But we've hit a few hiccups. Uh, there's a bug that has come up in the past day or so that we're working with several Cosmos core developers to try to fix and, and get our head around. But we're hoping, uh, at least now, we're hoping that we're able to resolve that issue today or tomorrow and get validators back on track so that they can stand up a test net by the end of the week and come up with a plan uh, for, you know, uh, being more confident with how Agoric Upgrade 7 is running and when to introduce it to mainnet. So unfortunately, uh, I don't have a date for you. And I know that we have another bug is not what you guys want to hear from us. Um, 
bugs happen. <laughs> we definitely didn't write that one. We're calling our friends who did and they're being very helpful and we appreciate them very much. Um, but we did hit a little bit of a hiccup there. So as we learn more, uh, I will go back to the thread on Commonwealth that's dedicated to the network upgrade. And Ari will also drop a few details in there as well, just about our testnet progress and what we'll be up to next. Uh, so yeah, the past couple of months have had some bugs in the middle, but with security bugs and functionality bugs, the only path um, through them is to just keep moving forward and we'll get there eventually, hopefully soon. Um, besides that bug work, it's re really been a busy month. Uh, there's been so much going on in terms of investing and in improving our coordination and some of the cooperation with validators between the network upgrades uh, to bring mainnet in line, hosting validator office hours to do a deep dive into the troubleshooting that we did in July. Uh, we've had a lot of hangout time with them and they're quite a funny bunch, by the way. They've got some really good jokes and really good memes. Um, the validator office hours that we hosted with the DCF are going to become a regular fixture on the calendar. And we're looking forward to having more sessions so that we can share more information about, you know, what's coming up for mainnet one and what things validators will need to know about um, operating our network with the, with the JavaScript stack in place. The other things that I've been working on this month um, are just continuing the security reviews that have come through to evaluate some of the different um, entities that would like to start contributing to the Agoric ecosystem, whether it's, um, you know, teams who maybe want to build a DAP or another vital piece of functional software or a service that our token holders will rely on, uh, making sure that we've got an eye on quality and we understand how those things work uh, is, is a huge priority. Um, as Jeet mentioned earlier, we've also been really busy with the validators and the delegation program. I've been working on additional security reviews just to take a look at the information that folks have given us this time around. Um, a lot of what I've seen so far has been amazing. When we first asked validators in February what they were up to and how um, far they had gotten into building their nodes. Lots of folks were in early stages. And um, right now, uh, especially as we're getting closer to mainnet one, it's been amazing to see how many folks have, you know, hired people, had their teams grow, or just had a huge glow up in terms of, you know, robust infrastructure and strong security, definitely on the key management front too. So that's been really exciting. Um, there's lots more of that work coming up um, as well. So you'll hear from us very, very soon with some of the results of what we've been up to for round two. Uh, the last thing that I've been working on is just a continuation of the work we're doing to get ready for the last set of security assessments uh, before launch. As our smart wallet comes together, that's definitely going to need some eyeballs on it. And we're getting um, much, much closer to a point where we are confident that we can schedule the assessment for Cosmic Swing Set and even the Oracle Network for Inter. There's a little bit more work to do, um, but I'm looking forward to having those booked really soon. And that's me. Awesome. Thank you, Jesse. Great. Um, uh, so I, I kind of want to pivot uh, to um, DCF and Rick. Uh, Rick, are you on stage? Oh, I see you. There you are. Yeah, I am here. Thanks, Santi. Yeah, awesome. Hello. Wanna... Yeah, happy to go ahead. Uh, thanks very much. And hello, everybody in the community. It's good to be here again. Uh, my name's Rick. I'm the president of the DCF and just wanted to deliver a couple of quick updates for you guys. Uh, first off, for those of you who've been where wondering where the DCF delegation program stands, um, as you know, it has taken us a bit longer to do the delegation than we initially intended, and we've talked about it on previous calls the reasons for that, uh, between trying to get a custody provider say, set up and trying to get uh, uh, legal documents in place. The good news is um, we've decided to proceed without having the custody provider set up, and the legal documents that we've been waiting on finally got taken care of this week. So we are finally in a position where legally we can fund the treasury of the foundation. And then once that happens, all sorts of neat things uh, start to follow on the back of that. 
Number one being that we get to go ahead and stake the funds that we have committed to to the various delegators. So expect to see some announcements on that coming out uh, very soon. And uh, there will be more details sent by email to the people who are part of that program here in the next few days. So that's a great step forward for us. And we're really looking forward to it. It's taken some heat off of us. The second thing I wanted to mention to the community on the call today relates to community activity inside of Commonwealth and Discord. Uh, we've been trying to spend more time in those spaces and interact more with the community around various issues. Um, it's starting to pick up some velocity. Uh, so if you haven't dropped by and checked out the Discord lately, or if you haven't been in Commonwealth, please do so. Uh, there's some good discussions going on there. It'd be nice to have a broader swath of the community involved in those discussions. We recently posted a uh, proposed set of process guidelines for the new community fund, which is being set up. We left those out in the wild for 10 days for comments. We got some interesting feedback that we're going to fold into it, and we will be putting up uh, that as a uh, signaling proposal for a vote before the end of the week. So please be aware of that. There will be a vote coming on that. Once we have that in place, we will have a process for governing the community fund. Uh, and that's something that I know some of you guys out there in the crowd today are excited about. And we're looking forward to getting that up and running. And I think in terms of news for this group at this time, those are probably the big items. So uh, I'll hand it back to you, Santi, unless somebody has some questions. Yeah, no, we can keep it going. Thank you, Rick. Uh, I, I think I just have some high level stuff that, you know, for the community, um, you know, we're, we're gearing up for, for Masari Mainnet event in, in New York City, uh, September 21st, 23rd. So if you're around, we'll have a booth there. Uh, we're giving a talk there uh, and we're planning some uh, some secret events there that you might want to attend. Uh, we're also going to be hopping on a plane and flying down to Medellin for Cosmoverse. Uh, that's September 26th to 28th. Uh, we're also speaking. We have a, we're going to have a presence. We're going to have a bunch of uh, uh, developer workshops there along with other, uh, other projects in the, uh, the interchain, which we're really excited for. Um, and, uh, you know, some upcoming stuff, more virtual. Uh, we have the uh, inter-protocol uh, community call that's going to be, uh, I think that's the third one now on uh, August 18th at 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, so same time as this one. Um, and then the, uh, our next Agora community calls on September 1st. So, you know, keep a lookout. We obviously do all the announcements on our channel. So if you want to jump in, um, and that, uh, that pretty much covers it. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. All the speakers today, a uh, bunch of fun stuff. Keep a lookout on Commonwealth, especially for, for all the points that, uh, uh, uh Rick, Jesse and, uh, Jeet have mentioned. And, um, yeah, we can't wait to see you next time. Uh, if you have questions, jump in our discord, let's do it. Let's chat. Uh, and yeah, thank you, everybody. Have an awesome uh, afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you may be. <laughs> thank you.